If I use my power more, I can even keep you from getting the job. If you don't like it, apologize to me. I laughed at that phrase. Okay, then do it. My name is Mary. I'm a struggling new mom. But my husband, who is supposed to struggle with me as a new father, does not exist. To be honest, I didn't realize the extraordinary character of my husband until I got pregnant with my child. My husband is a senior at work, six years older than me. And he was a smart, hard working businessman. When he became my supervisor, he was very calm and gentle. Then we got to know each other privately too, which led to our marriage. I was just starting out in the business world, but I fell in love with my husband. I was so happy to be able to marry him. In our company, it's not unusual for people to get married among the employees. However, we were not allowed to work in the same department after we got married. After much discussion with the company, it was decided that I would be transferred. I had obtained a patent attorney license while I was still in college, which is said to be very hard. So I was hired to work as an in house patent attorney at the head office. During my first year as a new graduate, I was assigned to various departments to learn about the company as a whole. And I happened to be assigned to the sales department where my husband was working. So when I got married, they decided to assign me to the legal department a little early. Five years into our marriage, I visited the hospital because I was not feeling well and found out that I was four months pregnant. We had let the pregnancy happen naturally, but we were very happy that we were expecting a child. However, as I entered the second trimester, the morning sickness returned and I was forced to take a three month leave of absence from work. My husband then showed his true colors. Are you sleeping? My anemia is so bad I can't get up. What about dinner? Is that what you're asking me under these circumstances? When I was working hard, we used to split the household chores between us. But as soon as I took a leave of absence, my husband left me to do all the chores. You're home all the time and you don't do a single chore. Can you please stop? You're making me even worse. Wait a minute, that's a mental problem. That has nothing to do with anemia. The point is, you're using your pregnancy as an excuse to slack off. My husband watches loud TV without paying attention to me laying on the bed. And he purposely opens the door of the room I'm sleeping in with a loud TV sound. Please close the door. I'm sure my husband can hear me, but he doesn't pay attention to it. And this is when I learned the new side of my husband. He would watch TV and complain about the women on the screen. How can she be on TV? She's so ugly. Whoa, she's so fat. He's really bald. He complains about the TV programs all the time, endlessly. Is this how TV is supposed to be enjoyed? You're free to say whatever you want to say to yourself. But please don't open the door to the room where I sleep. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop complaining. Close the door, please. My husband ignores me. The TV is loud, and my husband is talking to the TV, which I don't want to hear. I couldn't take it anymore, so I close the door myself. And then I go back to bed. But he quickly opened the door again. Hey, why did you open the door? He didn't answer and continued to watch TV. I couldn't stand it any longer and called my parents. My mother agreed to let me stay at home to rest and recuperate. 
The environment at my parents' house was truly worthy of the name Retreat. They provide me with three well balanced meals daily. My mother, father, and two younger sisters are all very calm. My sisters are the first ones to come home from school to check on me. They would come to check on me and ask if I was okay. My health is gradually improving and I can now eat my meals in the dining room. Lunch is ready. Thank you. May I turn on the TV? By all means. I was eating lunch with my mother and watching TV. And she's laughing while she's watching TV. This comedian is so funny. Let's go to this shopping arcade after the baby's born and things settle down. The sight of her calmly and happily watching TV brought tears to my eyes. My mother was very surprised when she realized that I was crying because I sniffed my nose. What's wrong? Are you sick? No, I'm fine. What's wrong? I don't enjoy living with Nico. Oh, why? I told my mother everything, who had accepted me without asking any questions. Oh, is that what happened? He purposely opens the door to my room. It was so loud, so I closed the door and he'd open it right back again. And he complains about the TV all the time. I want to laugh with him as I do with you. Oh, that's a problem. You're going to have a baby. I can't stand the thought of him doing that in front of the kids. Well, I think you should have a talk. I don't want to see him anymore. Mary, you're going to be a mother. You can't just say you don't want to see him anymore. You have a child. You're right. For the sake of my child, I decided to have a talk with my husband. I was feeling much better, so I took a leave of absence for only two months and went back to work. I went back to the house where I lived with my husband. The house was very clean and well kept. He seemed to be living well even on his own. But the smell was the only thing that bothered me. Is this the sensibility to smells during pregnancy? And when I opened the door to my room, I found it to be the dirtiest room imaginable. It was like a dump. This is where the smell was coming from. I wondered if he had been eating in this room. Unwashed dishes and garbage all over the floor. And then my husband came home. What? You came back? What's this? What's what? My room, what happened there? Yeah, it's a punishment for you for neglecting your chores, not taking care of me, and going home to your parents. And you gain weight. Don't get any fatter, or I'll divorce you. You weren't like that before I got pregnant. Why did you suddenly change? I've always been like this. You just didn't notice that. If you don't take care of me, pretend to be sick, or go back to your parents' house, I'll punish you again. What about the child? Huh? If we put our child first, you will take care of yourself. That's the way it's supposed to be when the child is still little. You're such an idiot. Of course I come first. Don't you listen to me? The child comes second. Come on, cook dinner. I'm going to live at my parents' house. Oops. That's okay. You just get punished by me again. In the end, we couldn't discuss it. At this point, I decided to divorce my husband. 
I went back to my parents' house and talked to them. I didn't expect it to go that far. What can I say? He's a twisted little shit, isn't he? He's a twisted scumbag. No, he's a twisted scumbag shit. What are you all saying? My family makes me smile. Me and my little baby are fine. My family welcomes us warmly. The time passed and a healthy boy was born. I was told that my parental leave would be a year, but with the support of my mother, I returned to work six months after giving birth. All for the sake of my son. I will work hard and provide for my son. And I used my day off to go to my husband's house to get a divorce. When he saw me, he grinned wickedly. He waved the divorce papers in front of me. I'm divorcing a fat wife like you. Here are the divorce papers. Oh, thank God, you're so quick. You can just write it now. As I was about to pick up the divorce papers, my husband hurriedly crumpled up the divorce papers. What are you doing? Wait till you hear my side of the story. What? Listen to me. Look at me. No, you just said you're divorcing me. I heard you. Now divorce me. You won't be able to live without me. No, I haven't had any problems without you for the past six months. In fact, it's been very peaceful. I'm a salesman. So? I'm the one who gets the work to our company. That's why you guys have jobs. Are you serious? A company is only as good as its salespeople. Have more respect for me. Just go ahead and sign the divorce papers. I pull the divorce papers out of my bag. My husband tried to tear them up and throw them away. What do you think will happen if you tear it up? My husband's hand stopped. Then I took out the voice recorder and my phone from my bag. I recorded all of the conversation we just had. My husband took the voice recorder from me. The phone is connected to my colleague. Even if you tear up the divorce papers and erase the data from the voice recorder, my colleagues are listening to every word you say. If you don't sign the divorce papers now, I'll have my colleagues file a complaint with the sales department. What do you say? Sign it or tear them up? My husband nodded and filled out the divorce papers. I don't need any alimony, no child support, just stay away from us. Okay, I got the divorce papers signed. I quickly left the house. Thanks, mom. It's okay, just go to the city office. My phone was connected to my mother. I was relieved that he didn't find out I was lying. I really could have asked for help from my colleagues, but this was someone I'd once swore my love, so I couldn't bring the company into it, no matter how much of an asshole he was. The company is my husband's and my lifeline, but he made my last act of mercy worthless. After the divorce was finalized, I became the target of rumors because my ex-husband took this opportunity to call me a horrible wife, a moral harasser, etc. My ex-husband used every possible means to spread a negative campaign about me. But I kept my mouth shut and didn't even try to argue with him. A mother is a strong woman, they say. For the sake of my child, I can stand up for myself, no matter what the circumstances. I was not at fault in the slightest, except that I was blind to men. A sympathy for my ex-husband gathered around the sales department in the company. I was washing my cup in the hot water supply room. 
My ex-husband called out to me from behind. Hey. Huh? I mean, why are you here? I came to see you. <laughs> no, you don't need to. You're in a lot of trouble right now. What? You're now the bad one. What are you talking about? Don't be so tough. You're the talk of the company. Uh, okay. My ex must have thought I was down. I'm not going to let him get away with that. I got work to do, so goodbye. As I was leaving the hot water supply room, my ex stood in front of me. That's what happens when you piss me off. So what exactly do you mean? My ex-husband started to get irritated by my unexpected response. That's why you're getting a bad reputation in the company. So? You're in trouble, right? No, not at all. If I use my power more, I can even keep you from getting the job. If you don't like it, apologize to me. I laughed at that. Go ahead. Do you know what my job is? Only our colleagues in the development department can say that. I'm a patent attorney. How can you, a sales manager, stop me from doing my job? Patent attorneys and salespeople have nothing to do with each other. Oh, are you saying that you're going to get a patent by talking to me? You never get it, so if you're going to apply for a patent, make sure it's not with me. Then my husband yelled at me. He took my cup from my hand and raised it with a mighty swing. He's going to hit me. I quickly closed my eyes. That's enough. I heard an unfamiliar voice. When I opened my eyes, I saw the general sales manager and the general manager seizing my husband. I thought it was a lover's quarrel, but what a surprise. My ex-husband was stunned by the appearance of the general manager. I'm sorry about our sales manager. Are you hurt? Oh, I'm fine. You, you're talking too loud. We could hear you all the way to the conference room. My ex-husband was confronted by the general manager and remained frozen in surprise. Then he was taken away by the general manager. And that was the last time I saw my ex-husband. Because he resigned voluntarily after that. Next to the hot water supply room where I was being attacked by my ex-husband, there was a conference room. The regular meetings held there were attended by the general manager, the general manager of the sales department, the deputy general manager of the legal department, and the top of each department. Of course, the top salesmen were also present at these meetings. My ex-husband, irritated by my attitude, shouted abuse at me. And everyone in the meeting could hear him. My ex-husband's misdeeds were exposed. My ex-husband, who had lied to everyone about me being a moral harasser and a terrible wife, reversed the position and he became a violent and a power-mongering husband. He couldn't stand it. The mercy I put on him in the end, he destroyed it with his own hands. In other words, he got what he deserved. As for my ex-husband's fate, I have no way of knowing anymore. I'm just glad he's out of my sight. The truth always comes out at the end. So now the source of my stress is forever gone. I'm going to work harder and harder. I want to be a mother whom my son can be proud of. In the end, what did the ex-husband want to do exactly? I feel like everything was meaningless. Well. I'm just glad that Mary is doing well.